In this module, I am going to cover a very, very important topic in the intensive care unit and that is the mechanical ventilation. The objectives of my talk are to understand the physiology of mechanical ventilation, to understand the basic modes of mechanical ventilation, when and how to initiate uh, invasive mechanical ventilation and to understand the monitoring and complication during invasive mechanical ventilation. If I want to broadly say the indications for starting the invasive mechanical ventilation is of course acute severe hypoxemic respiratory failure. It could be acute hypercarbic respiratory failure when the non-invasive ventilation is either contraindicated or has failed in a patient who is apneic or a patient in whom you want to reduce the work of breathing like in a patient of shock. I want to mention little here that in a patient of shock, although he is able to maintain his oxygenation, but his work of breathing, he is breathing at a very high rate and the oxygen cost of breathing is very high. A lot of oxygen is being consumed by the respiratory muscles and there is decreased oxygen to the vital organs. So if you ventilate these patients, you take away the oxygen cost of breathing and this will be available to the vital organs for their good functions. So this is also one of the indications where in modern days you do uh, invasive ventilation in a patient of severe shock. Another thing which I want to say here is that mechanical ventilation should be considered early in the course of illness and should not be delayed until the need becomes emergent. It should not be emergency situation like you intubate and ventilate. It should be always planned and most of the time you should be doing the intubation impending severe acute respiratory failure rather than emergency situation to arise and then ventilate. Physiological and clinical findings are helpful in assessing the severity of illness. However, I think the decision to initiate mechanical ventilation should be based on clinical judgment that considers the entire clinical situation rather than just a one ABG or a one parameter. So when you ventilate a patient, you have certain goals. Goals could be to maintain adequate oxygenation like in a... Thank you.